I've come down to this little cove in Devon and I'm looking for some decent flint. I think I'm going to need to get behind them beach huts though. I keep hearing that the flint here is really good but I've personally never sampled it and I'm quite excited to do so because it's the furthest point away from East Anglia that you're likely to find flint. I've been scrummaging through the brambles but all I'm finding at the moment is this tiny little stuff. It looks good but I'm not really sure that you could make anything impressive out of it. See what I mean? I guess I'm going up here and need brambles in. Well, I found a bit that I like. It's right here, look. But I'm just having a bit of a job digging it out. The only thing I've got is a little stick. It's quite hard stuff. So I'll um, press on with it. <laughs> Well, I've arrived at Hengusbury Head. This is an ancient monument, and um, it's on right next to the River Solent, leading us out to the Isle of Wight. As you can see, I haven't got the best weather on my hands, but um, the plan is, is to come here and uh, make the hand axe from the piece of flint that I found at Beer. And, uh, well, we'll see how that goes. It has to be said, that looks pretty sharp for fishing in. Quite dangerous actually. <laughs> so there would have been a time when um, you could pick up raw materials right here that would have been suitable for making things like hand axes. However, <laughs> um, there's been a lot of coastal defence work done and um, a lot of things get covered over. So what we see today is um, not typically as things would have once been. However, along the beach there I might find a few little suitable hammer stones which are going to help me make this hand axe anyway. So it's not a complete loss. What we're looking at is actually flint and um, the ideal hammer stone would be a, a chunk of quartzite. That looks like quartz. Natterjack Toad, one of the residents. <laughs> That's pretty beautiful, isn't it? It's all that time banding going on right there. So now we're looking directly across the Solent, the River Solent, the ancient riverbed and that's the Isle of Wight with the needles that you can see far from the distance and this is where people were making ancient tools many thousands of years ago so that's what I'm going to get on with right now and show you how that was done. So 
brought this all the way from Beer and um, I managed to get it out of the uh, cliff. It's never been hit before. I found myself a quartzite pebble and that's going to be one of two tools that I'm going to use to do the job. Everything that comes off is going in the bag. typicals just started raining and um, interestingly enough just like the guy who was um, taking me for a walk on the fossil one he over years has been studying them rocks and he knows them rocks really really well now and um, I didn't have the same familiarity with the rocks that he was dealing with and what I've got to do is try and get into this rock and try and work out what the conversation is really Let's see what happens. So far, it hasn't done what I want it to do. It's just snapping off square. Hardly actually napping at all. But surely things can't stay like that. I need to get napping behind the cortex. That's more like it. So now we've got the angle here. That's probably the leader and pretty much the way in. this is coming off nice. Technically that's the first point of the hand axe that we can actually see. I think that's flint, in fact I know it is. Nice material though right? got a bit it is nice material it's fine another trip back to beer maybe so I'm actually napping flint on flint So normally you wouldn't nap flint on flint because uh, the flint is more vulnerable than the quartzite but because it's rounded it's less vulnerable than the piece of flint so that's why I'm using it. And it's a slightly, although it doesn't look like a very contained shape um, it's slightly easier to wield than the bigger one that I brought along.
Ah! Now that I did not want to happen. That was the bulk of my length, really. However, we could still use this. It's got a couple of little imperfections in there and that potentially is one of the reasons why it broke in half. Keep slimming this down, maintaining the sharp edges, converting shape a little bit so I can turn it over and strike back in the opposite direction. Why you normally nap at source if something goes wrong <laughs> you can still get another bit so that edge is going okay and um This is why normally you'd want one of your deer and soft hammers so you can hit these edges without actually having to take so much mass. But um, working with what we've got. So in a, in a nutshell, we have a little hand axe. It most certainly isn't the best hand axe I've ever made, but under the circumstances, it still replicates. Um, it's a suitable replication for some of the stuff that you'll see on the museum shelves and um, fits comfortably in the hand. It's a, little, a nice little cutting tool and um, well, 
that's what we came to do. One thing left now, that's whether I dare get the fishing rod out. <laughs> I'm just coming up to the entrance to the visitor centre here and um, what do you know, bump into um, my most direct ancestor, my dad. <laughs> yeah. So I've just come into the exhibition and um, there's a really nice film that um, is showing my dad, showcasing some of the skills. And um, there's even a bow that I made here. These look like replicas that my dad has made. And then once again, I remember that quiver. That's a quiver I made. So it is actually a very lovely museum, well worth coming to. So I guess with all that being said, that brings us to the end of this little Jurassic tour. I hope you've enjoyed it and um, had a little bit of fun and possibly a laugh at my expense. I'd better think about heading on home now. <laughs>